Hello everyone and welcome back to my career let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.3 and in this episode we need to try and unlock better communications because I want to do interplanetary missions we've got all the alarms queued up for the different planets we would like to go to and in order to get better communications we need to get a higher tier of science I would like this precision engineering with uh, this communitron and that relay antenna the communitron is what we really need for the probes uh, there are basically two ways to extend your communication range in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, the first is by upgrading the tracking station, which increases the power of the ground uh, station. And by increasing the power of the ground station, you increase the range of the antennae. So if we take a look here, I don't know if we can see it properly here. Um, you can see if you have the level 3 DSN, Deep Space Network, uh, you increase the range to 22.4 gigameters. Uh, which is 22.4 million kilometers and that is more than double the level 2 deep space network which is what we currently have at 10 million kilometers but actually the level 2 is a much bigger upgrade compared to level 1 level 1 is only 2 so it's 5 times gap there but only a double increase there so uh, when we take a look at 22.4 million kilometers, what, what does that get us, really? And again, uh, we're just on level 2 right now, so we'll need a 1.12 million credits in order to upgrade that, which is not the best way of doing this. Uh, I don't think we need the full 22.4. Let's see. So, well, I don't know. It's uh, difficult to tell because... When you take a look at Kerbin plus Duna, Duna is probably a good target, though Eve is possible. Um, when you take a look at Kerbin plus Duna, if they were on opposite sides of the sun, Kerbin is right now at around 13 million kilometers. So let's say it was here and Duna was over there. Well, then you would need an antenna that could do 13 million kilometers plus 21 million kilometers. So that's about 34 million kilometers. Well, even that other antenna, even this little guy, does not seem to have that kind of range. And so, what will we do? We'll probably put more than one. <laughs> Basically, they're additive, as far as I know. Actually, let me check the settings here. There may be a difficulty setting about that. Um, th there is a range modifier here. So your antenna strength might be different than what I've got. I've got the same DSN modifier, but my ranges might be lower. So it's possible that with just one of those antennae and a level 3 DSN, you could communicate with Duna just fine. I think that's probably pretty standard. I think that's what they're really for. I'm so surprised they don't have enough range, actually. But anyway, uh, so we're probably going to have to put uh, more antennae here because this is hard career mode. Uh, but in order to get that antenna, we need to also upgrade the research and development facility, which is 900,000 funds. So combined, that's what, 2 million. We need 2 million. And that's a lot. So taking a look at our contracts, we've got Explore Minmus. I should probably take that. Uh, there's a lot of rescue contracts, and I think I'll just do these quickly. Uh, so... Uh, I'll, yeah, uh, we, we have to rescue them from orbit of the moon. Hmm, could we rescue all of them at the same time? That's a question mark, because I don't think we have the lander can right now. And it's tough to fit things. Let's see, we, we don't even have a two-person paw. Oh, no, we do. We have the P. Hmm. This is uh, my first plan, which is a redo of the Minmus sample return mission. Now, uh, if you remember, we didn't really do that very well. And that was because we were limited to 30 parts. Well, we're not limited to 30 parts anymore. We can use, well, right now we've got 46. So we can do it in style. And so this is the rocket I've got for that. But let's say I did get this P re-entry module. Now, I don't like these because they have very bad aerodynamics. But what if we, like, do this? Now we've got enough for three Kerbals, but they may all die. I'll ponder this. This, I mean, if we got to rescue Kerbals, we ought to rescue them properly, right? 
But let's take those contracts and try and rescue all the Kerbals we can. And actually there are four of them. This uh, Rescue Alley from Orbit of the Moon. Temperature surveys of the moon. These don't pay that well. Well, the the Rescue from Orbit of the Moon pays better than the one from Kerbin. Position of Polar Satellite doesn't pay that well. We just don't have much that pays much. But temperature surveys of Minmus is pretty good. Maybe we can do the Minmus and Moon one with the same probe. Okay, well, let's try that. We'll measure temperature in spaceflight here. Here, there's also measure temperature in spaceflight. We'll do a lot of temperature things. Okay, I've decided to try for the rescue first, so we're going to go with this odd configuration with the Mark 1 pod on top and the P reentry module here. I've also added a heat shield. I put 140 ablator. I don't know how much I should put, but uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm more leaning towards just putting all of the ablator. Maybe that would be for the best. Uh, I do have uh, what's called asparagus staging. Basically, I'm feeding fuel in from the boosters into the center so that the center will draw fuel from the boosters until the boosters separate, and only after the boosters separate will it use its own fuel. So this is not reading the correct delta V right now. If we look at this chart in on the launch pad, it will probably give us the right numbers though. Uh, so that's that, and then the LV-99 here. I use the Reliant Engines outboard, which means that those don't have gimbling. The only gimbling engine that we'll start off with is the swivel here. So I decided to add some fins for extra stability. Uh, fins are relatively lightweight. They're, it adds expense, but it makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, we are, of course, not launching with a Kerbal. And I've added antennas here so that we can uh, maintain control, very important. And I'm actually going to hibernate in warp auto there. And that should be ready to go. Let's try it out and see how many Kerbals we can actually rescue, making sure that we do not put any Kerbals in the pod right now. So, on to the moon. Okay, here we are. Everything looks to be a go. SAS on, throttle is up. Now, I'm expecting a lot of drag from this P reentry module, so we want to launch a bit steeper than normal. Yeah, and I'm worried about what it might do. My expectation is that uh, the boosters plus the core stage will get us to orbit or just shy of orbit, and then we'll finish off with the LV-909. And, yep, here we go. And we're off. So I'm just going to have Smart ASS maintain stability there. And we are close to where we dumped the boosters. Booster separation is good, clean, no explosions. Okay, LV-909, the Terrier engine. And here we have 2,200 altogether. Um, and a lack of communication, that's not good. Well, that sucks. It would be really good if we could reacquire right around 3,000 meters per second game. <laughs> now it switches off. Unfortunately, we can't bring this back down into... into Kerbin SOI anymore. Um... Set us target? <laughs> I mean, there's no point actually sending this to Moho, but... Uh, since apparently we're going there. Oh wait, no, there was actually an encounter there. We have an Eve encounter. I'll take it. I, I don't care. So, uh, there we are. Accidental Eve encounter. Not really close to Eve, mind you. If we take a look at the pass, it's like that. And I don't think... I mean, we can get that close but I'm not gonna fiddle around with it this is a failed mission and we need better communications all around so maybe I should work on that first okay time to take a step back and reassess and launch some commsats finally uh, we had previously launched commsats that looked a lot like this but that was with the 30 part count limit and so I didn't get to put all the things I would like to put nor 
that I get to put boosters and fins on the ro rocket that launched it. Oh, so I've uh, combined the decouplers here. You can see this one pointing up, this one pointing down. And that's so that they don't attach to either side. Uh, so that we don't have uh, them hanging out. We'll have a, that'll be a little bit of space debris, but at least um, we won't have them sticking on to the satellite. But uh, see, previously I think I had uh, assumed that I could just look at this number here. But really we need to focus on this antenna rating. And it says 5,000 kilometers combinable. And so with four of them, this should have 20,000 kilometers. Maybe I should just put some commutatrons. I feel like, just for safety's sake, I don't know why, but I'll, I'll put some commutatrons. I'm just sick of not having communication, you know? Okay, so, so we'll have bonus commutatrons. Where we really want them is geostationary position above the area, right beyond the launch site, right? We always lose communication right around here-ish, and that's where we want it. Uh, our previous attempts, we had some sort of problem that uh, left them in these sorts of orbits, which might not be the best thing. And they are sort of above a 5,000 kilometer altitude, but there are two antennae on each of them. So in theory, they should combine to still give coverage. I don't know. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, and launch. I'm using SRBs here and that's because they're cheap and we're gonna be disposing of them anyway. The problem with them is of course you can't throttle them and they don't gimbal so that's why I'm lighting the core engine right at the start and also why I've thrust limited these engines you'll note that oh it doesn't show the thrust limiting but I did thrust oh we've got oscillations um, Auto strut to heaviest part, please. And you root part. Well, that's not helping a whole lot, but I think we can manage. Yeah, I thrust limited them just so that uh, we don't have too high a thrust weight ratio. Okay, separation, and we continue. Now this time this engine wasn't feeding from the boosters, so it just has a little bit more time to it. And then we have an LV-909 upper stage. I said geostationary, didn't I? I meant geostationary, of course. This is Kerbin. Well, that's good enough so that if we do lose communication, we're not going to um, kill the probes. But let's get the antennae all extended. Okay, so let's aim for Keo stationary orbit. And for that we want 2,868 kilometers for our circular orbit. So on both apoapsis and periapsis. And we're expecting a six hour orbit. We're going to use this stage to boost it on one end and then each of the probes will circularize themselves. What we're looking for is an apoapsis of 2868 but probably this stage is not going to finish that off for us. We'll see. Oh, no it will. That's pretty good. Precision is important because we want it to stay above the same place otherwise it's going to slowly move away from the location we set it at, which is fine. I mean, as long as you have multiple satellites working together, it's probably not that big a deal. Okay, now I'm going to get our periapsis down into the atmosphere so this stage gets dumped. And that's fine. Then I'm going to decouple this. Okay, gonna decouple there. This is going to actually go pro. Well, uh, let's sidestep just a little bit. This is now making orbit again, but 
circularizing. And we'll get these commutrons out. Well, we had a surplus of fuel, but better safe than sorry in this case, especially considering the previous missions like this failed. Now that is one location, but this isn't really where we wanted the satellite. We just gotta make sure that we're in a six hour orbit and that'll do for now. Let me see, I can thrust limit this for greater precision. There we go, one day. Good enough. And back to the other piece, and let's just make sure this is called ComSat 3 for simplicity's sake. Okay, this one we can now get rid of this bit. We, and this is actually on a suborbital trajectory note that should still be that uh, was ejected retrograde and so it's, de it's definitely gonna smash back into the well not back into the surface into the atmosphere and burn up is what we were aiming for and this is not gonna boost itself all the way up this is going to boost itself to a three hour orbit so it can phase with the other one. Otherwise we're going to end up in the same location as the other satellite which we don't want. And a three hour orbit will make sure that we are also outside of the atmosphere. So after one orbit this will be halfway around the world from the other one. If that's not over the KSC we'll boost to a four and a half hour orbit to put ourselves 90 degrees away from the other one. So that's the desert airfield, there's the KSC. This is sort of behind the launch location. So that's not where I really want to be. So I am going to boost myself to a four and a half hour orbit now. And this is where I wanted a satellite. So right now there's ComSat 3 and here's ComSat 4. You can see 90 degrees away from each other and they do have communication with each other. There's a line going between them. And we would like very much for this to be in the same orbital period so that whatever else happens they stay 90 degrees away from each other. Okay, that's one day, at least to the precision that I can manage. Okay, well, we've done that. Let's retry our mission. Okay, so first I'm gonna try this. And it occurs to me that, of course, we have to take into consideration this antenna rating, which is only 500 kilometers. And so if we want to communicate with something in geostationary transfer orbit or geostationary transfer orbit, that's 3,000 kilometers minimum. So we need to have antennae that can reach 3,000 kilometers. So I put six. <laughs> so we've got four of the Commutron 16s and two of the surface mount ones. We may need more, but then we do have the communication from the pod, which is not much, and this pod, which is also not much. So now we have eight, and that should take care of it even on the diagonals. And maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. It's not the best arrangement. I really should put just one of those relay antennae but it's very awkward to try and put one on this. This looks a little bit more reasonable. And we still don't have action groups, so I'll leave that be. Actually, I could assign um, these to the light action group. We could toggle antenna while, it's, while we toggle the lights. All right, here we go to the moon. Once again. So I'm gonna have to remember to extend those antennae using the light action group. I actually removed the lights from that action group uh, after I stopped recording that bit. Okay, booster is set. And everything looks fine. Nominal. Okay, let me shut down right now. 84 kilometers on the apoapsis. And let's turn on the lights. And that does extend those antennae. Very good. And so we have eight of these antennae combined. They should have a range of 4,000 kilometers. And do we have a connection? Uh, it looks like we have a 
a weak line to ComSat 4. So that's as expected. It would be weak, but at least we have a line there. Yep, so now we're communicating with a weak signal to our relay sat. Okay, separation. Sure looks like 8 and 10 I were necessary. But of course it'd be much better just to have a single relay dish. Okay, 91 by 82. And that leaves us with 2,200 meters per second in this stage to get over to the moon, do rendezvous with the various kerbals, and get back. That's crashing into the moon, we don't need that, but let's see where the kerbals are. That's Rosie's Heap. I don't remember getting out here, so... We should probably go for the closer in one first. So, Alley, Dafil, Daphne, Daphne, uh, Kernan, Ver, Verzer, Verzer, first. Verzer will be something separate. These are all in the same belt, so we're not going to have to do a uh, inclination change. We're just going to have to time it. So, maneuver note editor will let me fine tune my approach to the moon. So what we'll do is we'll do a maneuver out here in order to correct the inclination to match with the targets. For now we won't worry about that. Incidentally you can get um, MechJab to execute the maneuver node for you. I normally don't like to do that but I'll demonstrate just this once. Okay that should be enough time. The whole stage is three minutes. So I'll have Smart ASS off and I'll just click execute maneuver node and now it's gone into auto mode and it time warps itself there it begins now in realism overhaul I probably wouldn't do this because we've got ignition limits on the engines and if it messes up uh, we might not be able to light that engine again so I'm usually very cautious there And there's something else you can't do in Realism Overhaul, throttle down fully, but uh, MechJab makes full use of that. And let's see how it did. Well, that's basically what we wanted, so it did its job. So once we get into the Moon's SOI, we're going to lift that orbit up. We'll see, let's say we want to go to that one. Well, we need to pull the orbit in somewhat. And you can see the gap between us and the target there. Is it better with one of the others? Not particularly. And then we get into orbit. And we can plot right now even for when we're going to encounter it. And just get into a loose orbit and encounter it like that. Okay, it's a really, really tiny burn. 3.3 meters per second and what we're expecting is a correction to the periapsis and the inclination and the periaps sh periapsis should match the target periapsis which is about 10 kilometers pretty low oh, I passed it already but again we know what we're looking for and basically that's good enough At this point, it's good to have the rendezvous window up in MechJeb. If you don't have one, you might have to configure it. Might have underestimated how much electric charge we needed on here, actually. Here, another function of Smart ASS is to orient towards the sun. And I think down is what we want, oddly enough. Okay, now we are recharging. Let me double check that I've got this on. Ah, hibernate and warp auto. I thought I had it on manual. I mean, on auto already. And again, we can see the closest approach distance up there. Ah, there we go. Alright, now we have our approach 1.3 kilometers. We're going to go all the way around. And since we're hibernating, we shouldn't have any power problems right 
some communication problems, but only briefly. We've aimed to make sure that we're doing all of the rendezvous with uh, the Earth in view. Okay, we can actually see all three of our targets there. Okay, let's point towards the target. Making sure that we still have Delta V to return home, of course. And I'm going to estimate that we need 300. I think we can do all of this, and possibly we could have done even more um, without any problems with the Delta V we have right now. Of course, I sort of planned this out based on the possibility that they might be in really weird orbits, like, you know, uh, that, that one up there where Versa is. Again, we want the prograde vector right on the target. And we can sort of pull it along like this. Instead of using RCS. Once you get RCS thrusters, you can move the prograde vector using I, J, K, and L. But the RCS thrusters require mod propellant, a different kind of fuel. We currently don't have any in here because we're not using the RCS system. And primarily they're used for docking because you can't just turn your craft around to reorient the prograde vector when you're trying to dock. So then having little thrusters that can move that vector around without you reorienting yourself is really helpful. See now I could I'm gonna pull the prograde vector back to the target here but if you're docking you can't just turn your craft like that. In 20 seconds I had better point retrograde and prepare to slow down. We're going pretty fast. Okay, we're just pull, pulling up alongside here. And 10 meters should be fine. The Kerbal can deal with that. Okay, Daphne. EVA please. It's a wonder that Daphne or any Kerbal can actually fit in that thing, to be honest. Um, I forget where the hatch is on these new pods. Oh, well, looks like around there will do. Okay, so we have Daphne. Good times. And next. Kernand. Set as target. Well, Kernand is really close already. So, and practically within render range. So we don't really need to do major orbital corrections in order to rendezvous with Kernand. We just need to once again pull our prograde vector towards Kernand. So go opposite side of the target vector from the prograde vector. Prograde vector is here. And so, and the target vector is there. So I go an equal distance over to the other side and burn. And then we have the craft headed in the right direction. So at what point would I say that you need to take a look at phasing with the targets, you know, actually plotting something out here? And at what point can you just do a maneuver like this? I go for 10 kilometers. The further away you try and uh, just point at the target and burn, the more it's going to cost you. And eventually it's going to be a horrible sort of series of maneuvers that take a lot of delta V. The more delta V you're willing to waste, the further away the target can be and allow you to still do this sort of thing. But then it's really better for you to be plotting out a maneuver to meet up with the target. So once we go for Ali's scrap, I'll be actually plotting it out. Limited crew control. Daphne is a scientist. Hopefully one of these three is going to be a pilot. 
Kernand. Kernand is an engineer. Grab and board. Okay, so we should have two in here. Hmm, uh, transfer crew? No, just Kernand actually. Daphne got into this pod. Yeah. Okay, so one more space in the P. And now, Alley Scrap is 55 kilometers away right now. And instead of trying to just burn towards it to rendezvous, I'm gonna. Oh, control locked. Um, okay, well, I guess we'll have to wait until we have communication. Let's beforehand make sure we're oriented to the sun just so that we recharge. Right now, we're on the nighttime side, so we can't recharge, but might as well ahead of time try to do this. Okay, uh, what we can do is add a maneuver here now that we have communication, and we'll just boost up to phase with the target. This is more extreme than you normally have to do, and maybe even burning towards the target would be cheaper, but we have the Delta V and this is actually easier than going through all of that 1.4 kilometers the Kerbals can of course traverse two kilometers or so you have to be within render range before you can access the vessel and ask the Kerbal to do the EVA but in theory I could EVA the Kerbal right now it's just not that convenient to have the Kerbal EVA this entire distance. Well, we're coming to the part I have question marks about, where this weird little assemblage is going to re-enter properly. All the rest of this was just pure math as far as Delta V is concerned, and then just getting to things. And of course communication. Well, Ali is a scientist. So, no pilots unfortunately. Well, I guess it makes sense. The pilots wouldn't get themselves stranded around the moon in the first place. These guys all have one star already because, well, they're around the moon. Okay, well, we're fully loaded with Kerbals. Time to get back home. So, we are going around this way. We should make our maneuver here to exit. Okay, turning to maneuver node. Trying to make sure we don't hit any of these derelict pods along the way. And burn. Let's see, this one is especially worrisome. But I think we're going underneath it here. We are on escape. I suppose we could have had these guys do some more science. Let's see, let's. We must have had the crew report already though. I think we're pro we've probably done all the basics here anyway. Okay, curb and periapsis. Okay. Triple rescue! Let's hope we get some serious funds so that we can do the upgrades we need to do. We do need more science, but then we're going to do the Minmus mission to get that. Next time we're going to have to take care of the thermometer missions. Temperature scans. Okay, we are now in Kerbin SOI. Now on the bright side, uh, when it comes to putting all these antennae on, we're gonna bring them back. So I'm gonna toggle the light thing right now and make sure to retract those so that we don't lose them. And since we're bringing them back, we should get some recover recovery value, but it depends on where we actually land at Kerbin. Let's see. Well, um, nowhere good. The KSC is over there, and our periapsis here is in 17 minutes. So we're basically going to be aiming to splash down here or maybe accidentally hit some mountains. Dang it. Um, but yeah, we're going to be basically not quite the other side of the world from the KSC but pretty darn close. 
Okay, let's separate off this module. And so I'm going to go normal so that we don't hit it along the way. I'm going to eject that off and turn retrograde by doing negative surface velocity, which is basically the retrograde surface. And I don't really need MechJeb particularly, this SAS will be fine. That ejects the heat shield, but to be honest, I would like to recover the heat shield as well. That's extra value. We don't need to lose it. There is that mountain there. I see that mountain. I wonder if we could deflect a little bit. Um, which way would... this way? To like, sort of push away from the mountains. Got a little bit of overheating. I don't know if this sort of tactic works. It is changing our inclination, you know, but I don't know if it's the tilt or whether we we would have changed our inclination anyway. Possibly, no, like this a little bit. Unless we wanted to go straight over the mountains. That's maybe a better idea. Altogether, it seems like we're good on re-entry, though. It's just a matter of the terrain. We were carrying too much bleeder. By a lot. Maybe the best we can do is land over here somewhere. I mean, at least it's not these ridges or those. So yeah, I'm gonna aim for this area right here. Mm, though it, I don't know if it's gonna let me. I think we're, we're sort of coming down over here instead. I don't want to hit there. I guess over here, this valley. It's better to hit a valley than anything else. Come on, slow down, slow down. I hope that's a valley. I mean, it's tough to really f get a feel for what the train actually is. Oh man, it looks worse than I thought it would be. Uh, this this area of slope is probably not too bad. We could probably hold it. At least we avoided that bit. Maybe we can tuck in around here somewhere. And SAS should be able to hold it. The wonderful reaction wheels. Mm, plop. Well, okay. I'll take it. Uh, do we want to do... Maybe we should do a crew report here. 0.9 science. Keep. Uh, EVA? Uh, that might be risky. Well, we're here. EV report. Kerbin's Mountains. Okay, keep. Board. Just 1.4 science, but. Okay. Oh no. No, it, it started to happen. Oh no! Oh, I made a mistake. It started to roll. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. Daphne getting back into the pod made us. Roll, but uh, it doesn't look like anything has broken off. Good. Okay, quickly recover. Very risky to do stuff like that. Okay, well, we got a little bit of science. And we've got three new crew members. And we fulfilled the missions. So now we have to do the temperature surveys. We still have one Kerbal to rescue from around the moon, but that Kerbal will have to wait for a little bit. And then the Explore Minmus contract, which, which includes rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Minmus. The rest is easy enough. Return to Kerbin from orbit of Minmus, return to Kerbin from flyby of Minmus, which is sort of going to be fulfilled by the orbit one anyway. But the rendezvous two vessels thing is a separate deal altogether. 
So we'll have to take a look at that. Should we do it as part of this and fulfill all three missions at the same time? I don't know. I'll ponder that. But uh, for now, one thing we can do is we could upgrade either the tracking station or the R&D building. Maybe I'll wait. I mean, right now we don't have 160 signs yet. We only need to update the upgrade the R&D building in order to unlock precision engineering for the antennae that can reach Duna or Eve. And yeah, if, if we can't actually unlock those, there's no hurry. Okay, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.